as the CPS Inspector General as well as the Department of Education Inspector General to look at some of the relationships between AUSL and CPS. Uh, we're very concerned with the outcome of the last um, the last board vote to turn around three AUSL schools using I'm sorry three CPS schools using the AUSL model. Um, David Vitale, who is the president of the Board of um, Education, he is also the former um, former chairman of AUSL. He, prior to that, he was the chief administrative officer for Chicago Public Schools, and now that position is held by Tim Pauley. Prior to Tim Pauley holding the position of chief administrative officer, he worked with AUSL. So you can see that there seems to be a swinging door relationship between CPS and AUSL. Since David Vitale joined the board in 2011, he's cast votes for 15 AUSL schools, or 15 CPS schools to be turned around by AUSL. When we look at the contract amounts, this translates into about 4.5 million for the contracts, and this doesn't include the extra $420 per pupil that AUSL receives. It doesn't include the additional $30 million of capital costs that AUSL schools get for turning around, and it does not include the, tra the teacher training costs. Um, Rahm Emanuel, before he was elected, he estimated that once he got to be mayor, he would um, turn around turnaround, he would actually train up to enough teachers through AUSL to, um, to staff eight schools. That would be six elementary schools and two, uh, two high schools. And we can see that that's playing out today. Uh, when we look at Dr. Carlos Escoicha, um, he is a distinguished professor of educational leadership at AUSL. AUSL has an exclusive relationship with National Lewis University, the university that Dr. Carlos Escocia works for. Now, he joined the board back in 20, 2012, and since he's been on the board, he has actually voted to approve nine turnarounds. Now, on the one hand, he'll vote for the schools to be turned around, but he'll recuse himself from voting for the actual AUSL management contracts. Um, in his mind, he does that because he doesn't want to appear to have a conflict of interest. In our minds, if you feel that you have a conflict of interest for voting for a contract, then you should also feel that you have a conflict of interest for voting for the turnaround. So we asked the inspectors general to actually examine these folks, look at the relationships, make sure that there have not been any conflicts of interest um, surrounding these votes. And, you know, we're really concerned because we need to end this culture of votes that make it appear that the board members have this relationship where they're engaging in self-dealing. And we're also very concerned about the fact that AUSL seems to be more driven, not so much by data, not so much driven by objective assessment, but being driven by the need to hire the AUSL trainees who they're producing every year.